Hi everyone! Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome! It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. So, welcome to your readings for August of 2018. Summer is almost over. Boo. I know, it sucks. But, on a happier note, I want to give a big ol' happy birthday to the rest of the Leo clan that are finishing out your birthdays. It's your birthday season. I hope you guys had a great one. And I want to extend a happy birthday to the, Var the Virgos. Yeah, we're going to be going into your season soon. So, happy birthday to you guys. I hope you enjoy. Um, so, down to business. These are general readings, okay? So, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Yes, don't try to like fit something in there and then, you know, when it, you know, it really doesn't resonate, it doesn't fit. Yeah. Um, I am officially back in business when it comes to personal readings. Yeah. So if you would like a personal reading with me, you can find all of the information in the description box below, um, which includes the readings that I offer, a little bit about them and my email address. Yes. And their prices. If upon reading through them, you don't really know what reading you think would work best for you, just go ahead and email me. We can chat a little bit about your situation and then I should be able to decipher which reading would be best for you. Yeah. If you are in the New York City metro area, I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop every Monday from 11 to 5 p.m. That is located on 14th Street between 1st, I'm sorry, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. Please come by and see me. I would love to meet you in person. You can either come through as a walk-in, you know, at the time that you want, whenever it's convenient for you, or you can go to the website, which can be found in the description box below, and get their phone number. And from there, you can schedule a reading in advance. Yeah, definitely works out well that way. For the readings this month, I will be using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck. Look, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Like, it's so pretty and golden. Well, actually, you can't, can't really see it that way, but you'll see it when we get into the reading, yeah? And then I will be pulling some Oracle Guidance from the Fairy Forest deck by Lucy Cavendish. Yes? Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? I don't think so. So, without further ado, let's get to it, yeah? <laughs> hey Aries, welcome to your reading for August 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get into it. <sighs> hey Spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Aries for the month of August 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries. So, what's going on for August 2018? I'm seeing orange. I'm seeing red. Um, you being a fire sign, you're kind of your colors anyway. Um, but I really feel like you're going through... Aries. You're going through some sort of emotional grounding, I want to say, because I'm seeing orange. That's prominent. That's your emotional body. That's your sacral chakra. Um, your intuition also, like your, your, yeah, your feeling center. But I just feel like you're going through a period of get, really getting in touch with your emotions. What has emotional value for you? And with the red that I'm seeing, I, I feel like you're really working on grounding that, manifesting um, situations that would be m more emotionally fulfilling for you without the expectations of what it's supposed to look like on the outside. Like you're, I feel like you're very much in a mode of not caring where it comes from, who it comes from, as long as it's an alignment with what you know to be emotionally fulfilling for you, you're for, you're all, you're all about it. You're all about it. And actually... That's really quite a beautiful thing, Aries. Yeah. And now I'm seeing yellow. So this is willpower, but this is also a form of celebration, happiness, um, illumination also. But with this yellow, I really feel like your willpower is in greater alignment um, with higher will, Aries. And that's 
Awesome. All right. I'm going to give you one more shuffle. And then... We'll get into this. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Aries. Overall energy. We're starting you with... Whoa! There... Wow. The Ten of Cups in reverse. So there's that redefining of emotional fulfillment. For you, this is this is kind of a blockage, only because um, you may have been in situations where you were you were involved with people, or you were in situations. We'll just say um, that you thought would be emotionally fulfilling for you, but come to find out they aren't. But this is not such a bad thing. What I'm I'm not picking up a bad energy here with the Ten of Cups in reverse. What I'm picking up is a redefinement. You were in a situation, come to find out it's not the emotional fulfillment you wanted or thought it would be, and so now that's only helping you redefine things more. It's only giving you a greater frame of reference to really create what the true Ten of Cups for you is. Um, and actually, it, it might not feel like it, but it's definitely a blessing in disguise, so don't worry about it. Ten of Cups, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, the lovers and the lovers is upright. Okay, so this is um, this is definitely about a choice. Often, and I, I just want to say this because I've been hearing it, so I just want to I want to point this out. Some people are kind of confused as to how the lovers could be a third party or about a third party situation. I'm not saying there's a third party situation here, but this just bear with me for a second because this is relevant to what's going on here. I'm not saying it's a third party situation, but it has kind of become a definition or, or a representation of a third party situation because the lovers is often about a choice. A choice um, being either over vi uh, a vice or virtue, okay? With the vice being the, the masculine figure standing in front of the burning bush or um, also people consider this to be Adam and Eve. So Adam standing in front of the, the burning bush, Eve standing in front of the tree of life or, right. So that would be the choice, Adam being the choice of vice or Eve being the choice of virtue. And so that's where you can get into some sort of situations in which maybe you have a third party, maybe you have a choice needing to be made between two people, one being the better option than the other. Better is subjective in any sort of situation, okay? Now, with this one, here, this is definitely about a choice. And often I see this as a choice within yourself. You Are you going to choose yourself over someone else? Are you going to choose your needs over someone else? Are you going to continue to choose their needs over you? Sometimes it's what that means. Here, I'm picking up that sort of energy. Especially with the Ten of Cups in reverse, there is a choice now that needs to be made as to which direction you want to go in to reach that fulfillment. You could be dealing with a Gemini. I'm getting that here because um, the Lovers does symbolize Gemini. Um, you could be dealing with a deep soulmate relationship if you are, um, you know, involved with someone in a situation in which um, the relationship is not turning out to be exactly what you hoped for. It's not that Ten of Cups that you thought it would be, or at least at this moment, it's not. So there's a choice that's needing to be made right now. Oh, good, Aries, good. Eight of Swords in reverse. You're no longer trapped in your head about this. You might have been feeling trapped in this situation. <laughs> Woo, you might have been, yeah. But that energy is gone now. Look at you, Aries. King of Wands, upright. Bam, there you are. And it's so crazy, too, because you're really, like, in the mo a mode of you know exactly what you want now. And you really don't care where it comes from. I'm not saying you, you don't have standards, don't get me wrong. But as far, especially if you were involved with like one person that you thought, like you have the lovers here, okay? So I'm not saying that you don't have a deep connection with this person. And the lovers is upright, okay? But the lovers is upright more so because of your energy, Aries, okay? You are redefining this for yourself. You are, in essence, opening up the floodgates to really allow the universe to bring this forward for you in some way. Ooh, wow, this is really cool. Okay, let's get into the storyline here. Starting you off with the Four of Swords. Okay, so you might be taking a little bit of a break, respite. Um, yes, you definitely might be thinking about things a little more, trying to, trying to you know, collect yourself before you 
re-enter the battle. Four of Swords is coupled with the Knight of Swords in reverse. Very good. There is a lesson here that's being learned. Some of you might be learning not to not necessarily rush into things so much, so quickly. Um, some of you are releasing the energy of wanting to, re to rush in to some sort of situation. You're releasing combative energy too. It's like you don't want to fight anymore. You don't want to, if you've been in a situation where you feel like you've been having to fight for something, maybe that you've been having to defend yourself, you don't want to do that anymore with the with the Knight of Swords in reverse. So now it's like you're taking a break and taking a respite and trying to figure out how can you how you can approach things in a different way moving forward. I am, listen, I understand Aries very, very well. Okay, so I get it. I like seeing that for you, Aries. That's very good. <laughs> moving forward, we've got, ooh, the Knight of Cups in reverse. Uh -oh. With? Oh, the Nine of Swords. So this is two folds, okay? Uh, the Nine of Swords is upright. The Knight of Cups is reversed. Somebody is anxious. Anxious as fuck. It's either you, Aries, or it's somebody you're dealing with. Um, you, Aries, you might... And now this actually, for you, Aries, that I'm picking up, this is probably past energy. Um... Someone didn't accept an offer from you or you didn't accept an offer from them and you might have been in, uh, you know, anxious about it. Currently, though, I'm feeling like somebody wants to offer something to you and knows that they can't right now because of circumstances surrounding your situation. Um, and that's causing them a lot of stress. A lot of stress. Sleepless nights, daymares, nightmares. Daymares, if you're not, if, I mean, that's kind of a, a, a phrase I've been using myself. I've never really heard anyone else say it. But when I say a daymare, I mean like daydreaming of worst case scenarios. Basically like having nightmares during the day in your daydreams. Um, uh, <sighs> I'm going to be quite honest with you, Aries. If you have somebody around you that wants to make an offer of some sort of emotional value and knows that they can't I can't say that you are too torn up about it it just doesn't feel like that I feel like you've gotten to the point where you're just so over this situation that you're just like whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> moving forward we've got the nine of wands okay Battered and bruised, but still plugging on, still still trying, not giving up. This is definitely your energy, Aries, but it also could be the, air, the energy of the other person. Let's get this clarified by the Two of Cups. <laughs> All right, cool. So we really definitely have a, a deep soulmate connection here. We've got the Lovers and we've got the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is like the minor ar arcana depiction of the lovers here. If you look at it, it's a very similar situation. The cards are very similar. In the Two of Cups, however, this is where people are actually coming together in the physical world, if you can see it that way. With the lovers, it's often um, people being brought together on a spiritual level. Okay, so... Again, I'm getting two energies. I'm getting your energy, Aries, in the sense that you're not giving up on love. Because you know you can have it. It's just a matter of being open to it, no matter where the universe brings it to you from. But at the same time, there's another person out there that's not giving up on love. And actually not giving up on the connection either. Even though they may have not accepted your offer here with the Knight of Cups, and that's giving them anxiety, to a certain extent, they're not really giving up on the situation. They may feel like they can't give up on the situation. It may be, uh, it may, this may be a situation in which you felt a deep connection, Aries, and they either weren't aware of it or didn't want to hear it. And so now, after a struggle, you pulled back, and now here they come, like, oh shit, you were right. Mm hmm. That's okay. But. I can't imagine you're going to make it all that easy for them, Aries. But, I mean, duh. Aries can be pretty, a, a, kind of a hard ass, can't you? Sure can. <laughs> mm. 
mm. coffee. Okay. All right, moving forward, we've got oof, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. I like seeing that, Aries. To me, that's talking about a cycle coming to an end. Mm hmm. Coupled with, whoa, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. Wow. So we've got the Ten of Cups in reverse in your overall energy, and now we've got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse in the storyline here. There could be some karmic family cycles, either for you, Aries, or someone else that could be ending, coming to an end this month, or at least the, 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 the momentum behind them starting to slow down. There is an ending of um, weird. It's weird that this is coming. Well, whatever. But there's an ending to manipulative family cycles. Manipulative material cycles. The Ten of Pentacles in reverse here is saying to me this is like someone that is 100% um, completely focused on the material, having... Um, being a millionaire, being rich and famous, having a huge mansion with like 10 cars and a big ass pool and all that shit. Like all of the, like the, the like stupid, opulent, um, materialism in the Ten of Pentacles reversed. And someone is coming out of that kind of mentality. A cycle of desiring something like that is coming to an end, either for you, Aries, or someone else you're connected to. What I'm really getting, and it may not be, it really may not be coming to a screeching halt this month, but what I'm really getting with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, mind you, the Wheel is an also a Ten, is the Tenth of the Major Arcana. So this is... I mean, this is like major completions. But what I'm really getting with both of these in reverse is that there's a realization happening. If it's not just a realization happening, then the brakes are being start to be put on. But for now, at least, a realization is happening. And, and I always say, or I've been saying lately, awareness is the first step to making a change. So that's good. It's very good. Okay, okay, okay. Moving forward, we've got the Six of Swords in reverse. Someone does not want to move away. Some, I'm, really getting, I'm really getting an energy of someone just doesn't want to give up. It's almost like they're willing to stay and fight because the Six of Swords is about moving f to calmer waters. And I'm getting an energy of someone would rather... Um, would rather brave the rocky waters, the rough waters, instead of moving away at this point. I don't think that's your energy, Aries, because your energy feels very much done, like fed up, like I am not taking this anymore. But I feel like some other person or another, some like the other part of the situation that you're in, if you're if it's not a romantic relationship, it just they just would rather brave the rocky waters for you. At this point, Six of Swords in reverse is coupled with Strength in reverse. Could be dealing with a Leo. Um, okay, well, here, here's the thing. Because now, with Strength in reverse, this could be... Someone doesn't have the strength to move on. Doesn't feel like they have the strength to move on. Doesn't feel like they have the strength to, to, to change. Maybe. Fear. Aries, you might be dealing with some fear. That's interesting. I'm hearing not knowing which way to go, not knowing which way to turn. I mean, with the King of Wands underneath the deck in the upright position, you have all the passion and drive in the world. But some of you might be afraid of actually moving forward because you feel like you might lose something. Ultimately, whatever you lose on your journey is something that you didn't necessarily need anymore. But I'm also getting an ego battle here. Someone doesn't want to move 
away from rocky waters. This could be you, Aries. Absolutely could be you. But someone wants to brave these rocky waters because they want to prove a point, because they want to assert themselves, assert their ego, maybe try and prove that they weren't completely wrong the whole time. Like, for this, you know what I mean? Like, if someone is in, in this situation is coming across as the manipulative one and all that, may they may want to like stay in this current state right now just to prove just to prove that they're not as manipulative or they're not as much of an asshole as they have may have come off to be. But in the end, that's still exhibiting the same type of energy that helps perpetuate the situation to begin with. They may want to brave these rocky waters with you just to prove that they can. Wow, that's a weird message. But also, there are some people that are afraid of moving on. May, there are also some, there's also what I'm picking up here is this could be a situation of someone doesn't know how they're going to get past everything that has gone on in the past. They may not feel like they're strong enough to do what it takes to move out of these rocky waters because men, this is mental, the six of swords here, okay? So it, it, mentally, they may feel like they don't have... The strength, the wherewithal, the relationship doesn't necessarily have the strength to 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 deal with moving uh, uh, moving away from whatever conflict may have happened. Someone may feel like the situation got so bad, or some there was so much bullshit that went down that they can that this can't be fixed. That's pretty illusionary. In some cases, that might be true. But it's not like it can't. What I want to get through, the point I want to get through in that sense is you can always choose to forgive and work on moving forward. I personally, I mean, you could say like if, if the situation got bad enough, like maybe someone, I don't know, maybe someone tried to kill you or something. Ultimately, you still could choose to forgive that person and try and mend the relationship. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. You can choose to do so. So that's why not being able to get past what happened in the past is pretty illusionary. Because it's always a choice, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Moving forward, we've got... Oh, oof. There's that conflict. Five of Swords. Shit starter card. Yuck. Coupled with death in reverse. Well, shit. <laughs> so you could be dealing with a Scorpio, too. you damn right there's conflict. Look, there's that ego battle again. Someone is resisting a transformation. And Aries, this could be why you are deciding just to move on. Realizing that you know you are worthy of the Ten of Cups, and yeah, this might be a deep soulmate relationship, but if somebody doesn't want to do the work to transform, then fuck it, I'm out. And I really see, honestly, I see Aries, I see you as the two people walking away with their head down in the background. And it's not even like it's all that shameful. It's not shameful, it's kind of just disappointment, really. And then this shit starter is standing there with all those swords thinking that they've won something when really they're, they've lost big time. Mm. Ego is what I'm hearing. Ego. This now, this could be you, Aries. Don't get me wrong. This is a general reading, so these energies are interchangeable. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, moving forward, we have the sun in reverse. Okay, good. It's not all bad. It's really not, it's not what it seems. Everything will be working out just fine in the long run, but you just might not be able to see it right now. 
lack of clarity for some. Coupled with, ooh, the fool, upright. There is a lot of major arcana in this de in this reading right now. Aries, this is like a major, this is major for you. There's a lack of clarity here, but ultimately the, whoever is taking a leap of faith, whoever wants to take a leap of faith, this could be you, Aries, um, but it could be another person. Either way, whoever is about to take a leap of faith is under the understanding that no matter what, everything's going to be fine. Even though with the sun in reverse, it, things might not be too clear. It's okay. Because you know you're aware, whoever this is, is aware that the universe has their back. Yes, indeed. Finally, Aries, we've got justice. Upright. Wow. Coupled with, whoa, the hermit upright. Damn, Aries, look at all this. The lovers, and then the minor arcana depiction of the lovers in the Two of Cups. But we've got the lovers, the Wheel of Fortune, Strength, Death, the Sun, the Fool, Justice, and the Hermit. All of that major arcana. This is big, Aries. This is really big. And this just feels really good for you. I really feel like things are really moving in your favor right now, Aries. But Justice is coming because of inner truth, authenticity, integrity, standing in your own power. And you've been doing this for some time. I'm, I'm picking up Aries, which is why you have this cycle either starting to come to an end or in the process of ending. Well, if it's starting to come to an end, it's in the process of ending, but like it's almost done. Depending on where you are in your journey, there's a, there's a big major life cycle that's coming to an end. You also could be dealing with a Libra or a Virgo. Leo came up twice here with the sun and um, uh, strength. Wow, Aries. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's it. I was just trying to see if there was something else that was coming through. But justice is, your justice, Aries, is coming from your integrity. So, a good on ya. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the Oracle Guidance for this month. One card, please, in relation to this reading spirit. Okay, there it is. The Hedge Witch, card number five, Herb Wisdom, Secrets, Hidden Lore. Now, this is a five, so this is a card of change and transformation. Also, challenges. And we did get the Five of Swords here, but I don't think that's all too directly connected. But anyway, let's get into the definition here. The Hedge Witch, Herb Wisdom, Secrets, Hidden Lore. You are being asked to consider herbal forms of healing, working with what is in between, effective and yet natural, available and yet still hardly acknowledged. Changing the foods you eat to include more greens and herbs to boost energy and health and begin to pay very serious attention to the qualities of the food you eat, again, with a very close focus on the world of herbs and plants. You can, at this time, adjust the way you eat and find essential oil blends which assist with sleeping and becoming calm with dissipating anger, increasing self-love, and deepening your wisdom. Explore growing your flower, own flowers, vegetables, and herbs. When you begin to consider the truth that what you must ingest becomes the very molecules of your body, you may decide at this time to reduce additives, sugar, GMOs, and various forms of meat, too. You now begin a journey into health and well-being and eat what is good and wholesome for you. The Hedge Witch is the messenger guiding you to this new path of nourishment and well-being through the plant world. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Um, that was a message that needed to come out, but I'm being called to do another now. Because there's a message in conjunction with this. But actually, that actually does fall in line with this Ten of Pentacles here in reverse, and the, the um, 
the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Because like I was saying, this is like a redefinition of like all of the opulence and like the stupid materialism, right? And as, as you do that, you actually do become more in tune with your body, um, with spirit, with um, your health and well-being. You know, you're not just like indulging in all kinds of shit all the time. Okay, do another. Yes, okay. Aries, you're special this month. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but yes, do another. All right, so last message in, for in, re in, ooh, in relation to this reading, please. Last message in relation to this reading. Last message, please, for Aries in relation to this, whoa, message. There's another one. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. It's coming, guys, just be patient. <laughs> Last message, please. Last message, please. I guess not. I guess, I guess. Yeah, I guess not. Okay. Here we go. Ah! The wizard. Rune king. Wise one. Counselor. Okay. Okay, so the hedge witch is five. The wizard is 15, which boils down to a six. This is why. Excellent. Because these two are directly related to each other in this sense. There, uh, and this is absolutely you stepping into your power, Aries, with the King of Wands here, because the King of Wands is also is very passionate and, and, and uh, passionate and driven, um, and knows what he wants and goes after it. But he's also a torchbearer. He's also a leader. He the the King of Wands definitely can be a spiritual leader, and in redefining yourself, redefining your life, um, making this choice between vice or virtue, standing in your power and allowing the universe to bring you that which will you know will be ultimately fulfilling because you're holding that vibration and releasing expectation of what it should look like, who it should come from and all that. You gain more wisdom. You stand in your power. You own your authenticity. And in order to really do that and maintain that, that's where the message of the hedge witch comes in. Plant-based diet is what I'm hearing. Or at least have your greater focus on it. Okay? I mean, f follow what your body wants. You know, listen to your own self. Don't let others dictate everything you do. And Aries, you're not one to let that happen anyway. So there you go. But Okay. The wizard. Rune king. Wise one. Counselor. The wizard is out and proud about their beliefs and revels in public use of knowledge. This is a card that can turn up when one has embraced their spiritual journey, and your joy in embracing your true self is evident. There will also be recognition, sometimes very favorable indeed. You are beginning to do what you once only dreamed of doing, becoming whom you once dreamed of being. Your aura is changed, I'm sorry, is charged with healing green light. Your eyes shine with love and confidence, and your beauty is that of the inner natural divine self expressing outwardly. You are living your intuitive life outwardly in the world, fearlessly, powerfully, magically, and thus you are transforming and healing the world, as well as providing a loving example of a wise one, a wizard, to all who encounter you. No longer do you fear rejection from friends or family as you embrace your spiritual and personal path. This is not imaginary. There is nothing alien or bizarre about being intuitive and living magically, recognize, or reconnecting with your powers. Others may not understand what you speak of at this time. Do not allow their limited vision to dictate whom you become in this world. You will soon be asked for guidance, for your guidance. Offer it as you are able to help. That's a pretty awesome message, Aries. All right, so there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. And I look forward to connecting with you guys for the month of September. Yeah, take care. Much love. Mwah. Bye.